Today, we're learning all about ESCs, what they do, and why you'll need one to build your very own electric skateboard. What's up guys, my name is Mike Beard. I have built a ton of electric skateboards in the last year or so. Um, and now I would just like to kind of pass that information on to you guys, you know, the things I've learned over the years. Um, so today we are getting right into ESCs. So ESCs are an essential part of every electric skateboard build, but what are they and what do they do? ESC stands for electronic speed controller and, it, and it's just a little piece of tech that, that sits between your motor and your battery and kind of dictates how much power um, you want to send from your battery to your motor via some type of input. In our case, it is kind of more of a traditional electric skateboard wireless remote controller. So without an electric speed controller, you wouldn't really be able to control your board. You'd either be going full speed all the time or you really wouldn't be going anywhere at all. Um, electric speed controller um, lets us control our speed, kind of in the name, um, but it lets us you know, accelerate, apply the brakes, all of that just from the device that sits right in our hand, which is a remote. Basically allows us to control the board, very simple, kind of in the name, but um, for anyone who wasn't really sure, there you go. So ESCs aren't the most straightforward thing in the world. Um, there are a couple things to keep in mind. For example, uh, you need an ESC or VESC for each motor you're running. So if you're running a dual motor setup, you are gonna need two ESCs or you're going to need a dual ESC. Not all ESCs are capable of just handling two motors, so you do need to make sure you either have two ESCs and link them together or a, spe uh, you know, a special ESC that is able to control both motors. Um, just keep that in mind, something you'll need, so it may you know, make the difference between you opting for a dual motor or not because it does add um, a little bit of price to get two VESCs or two ESCs. Um, so keep that in mind, but uh, yeah. So while trying to figure out which ESC is right for you, there are a few different categories you should definitely look at to make sure you're getting um, the best ESC for your application. Um, a few things you definitely need to look at are the max amperage and max voltage um, rating, the ease of use, the price, the dependability, and the customizability. All five of those things really play a key role into which ESC you get. Um, so make sure you get what you're looking for, get what you need for your build, and uh, in your experience level. So while you're shopping around for electronic speed controllers, be sure you look for ones that are specifically designed for electric skateboards. There are a ton of different RC applications electronic speed controllers are for. You know, remote control cars, drones, remote control boats, you name it, tons of different stuff but those don't have to carry a ton of weight. All those electronic speed controllers don't need to push a person up a hill. They just need to lift a two pound drone up in the air. So obviously those aren't going to work. So stick to the electronic speed controllers that are designed to push a human being up a hill. Those will be able to handle the amperage you need, um, the voltage you need, and it'll, it'll just be the right size. There's a lot of different speed controllers that like say, for example, electric bikes, they totally will be able to carry uh, a person up a hill, but they're huge. So. Uh, electric speed controllers, forward electric skateboards are the way you want to go. Um, stay away from the smaller RC ones, they're just, they're just not going to work for you. Um, anyway, that's my advice and uh, hopefully that helps. So back to our five categories. The first category is max amperage and max voltage. So like we said, it takes a lot of power to get to push a person up a hill. So um, max amperage, definitely be looking at that. Um, Really the baseline for uh, electric skateboard speed controllers is 50 amps. You need to be able to be able to pull 50 amps and push 50 amps through your electric speed controller without it burning out. Um, 50 amps is basically the baseline. Anything extra is bonus, but 50 amps I find if you can get at least that through a speed controller, you're totally good. Um, a lot of the speed controllers will be able to pull 50 amp continuous and up to like 240 amp like max peak. So if you're just going up a quick hill and, and your battery spikes up a little bit or the amp you're pulling spikes a bit, it's not gonna blow your ESC, but um, 50 amp continuous means you can throw 50 amps through the ESC the entire time and it would totally be fine. Um, most speed controllers for electric skateboard applications will be able to do 50 amps, but keep that in mind if you're looking for some cheaper alternatives, they may not be able to pull or maintain that 50 amps. So like we said in our battery video, voltage directly impacts your top speed. So if you wanna make a 25 mile per hour board with a 10 cell battery, you do need to make sure that your ESC supports uh, 10S batteries. Um, so a lot of the regular ESCs, they'll support a very specific voltage, like 6S, 7S, 10S, and so on. Um, the problem with those is that you're kind of locked into those voltages. So if you think you maybe you want to have a 6S battery and then maybe when you get a little more confident in the board, you're going to upgrade to a 10S battery. Um, to avoid being, having to change the ESC as well, you, you should maybe look into more of a customizable ESC so you can put you know, any voltage into it. 
um, not be locked into a certain battery type. So ease of use is super important when considering which ESC you should get. Some ESCs are super plug and play. You know, you just plug the, the motors in and the battery and you're up and running in like two seconds. Others, you kind of need to mess with the settings a little bit. You know who you are. If you'd really like to tweak those settings and you'll go for more of a customizable ESC. If you just want like a plug and play option, you'll just get like more of a, a regular ESC that doesn't require a whole lot of work. Uh, but keep that in mind. I know I don't have to tell you guys that price is something to consider. Of course, the nicer ESCs are going to cost you a little bit more. Um, you'll have to weigh your options with your budget and uh, make a decision according to how much money you got to spend on your build. So as far as customizability goes, a lot of you really like to kind of dig into the settings, figure out um, the settings for different acceleration speeds and different braking power and all that kind of stuff. Um, you'll definitely want to get an ESC that's customizable. It'll say right in the description wherever you're buying your ESC at whether or not it's customizable. If not, ask the seller and they'll let you know. Um, for, the, for the people who just want a really plug and play option, they don't really want to customize anything, a lot of these regular ESCs aren't customizable, so you guys are good. And that brings us to the very last category, which is dependability. Um, not all ESCs are created equal. For example, I found that vests are a little bit more dependable than ESCs. They seem to be made with higher quality parts and they last a little bit longer. Um, just something to consider. Of course, they cost more. Um, so again, that's kind of how we said in, in the price category, the nicer ESCs will cost a little bit more. Um, but you know, it does go along with the dependability side as well. So if you've been paying attention, you've kind of been hearing me use ESC and VESC kind of interchangeably. There is a difference. Um, ESCs obviously stand for electronic speed controller. We've already covered that, but VESCs, they stand for Vader electronic speed controller. And Vader is just the name of the developer named after the developer who developed the more customizable ESC and, and VESCs are really more the standard for electronic speed controllers in electric skateboard use. So regular ESC versus VESCs, what are the differences? Well, regular ESCs are more simple. They're more plug and play, which means you're kind of more locked into a voltage usually. Um, there's no settings really to configure or anything like that. Um, but they are cheaper and they do come with a remote, which is more uh, adds on to your savings because you don't have to buy another remote. Um, but again, they're not as dependable as VESCs. They're not as nice. Um, but yeah, but they are really good starter ESCs. VESCs, on the other hand, are a little bit more expensive. You can customize all the settings and all that. Um, they don't come with a remote, which is a plus because you could kind of customize which remote you want, but it's also a negative because you have to buy a, a, a remote. So um, it adds a little bit more of an expense there, but it just depends how you look at it. If you're prepared to spend the money, then it is a positive because you really get to customize which remote you want. Um, and you know, they're higher quality and they're more dependable. Um, that, those are the kind of differences. Um, they basically do the same thing. They, they'll, they'll be the brain of your board, but uh, yeah, those are the kind of differences. So ESCs can definitely feel like the most complicated part of your build. If I have left anything unanswered for you, definitely drop a question down in the comment section below. Um, I'm pretty active down there and I'll definitely try my best to answer your questions. Um, if you need an ESC, um, we have links below to all the products you've seen in this video today. Um, if you're not subscribed yet, we do a ton of electric skateboard stuff. This whole channel is just dedicated to DIY electric skateboard stuff. Um, so definitely subscribe, like this video. Uh, if you have any ideas for videos or if you have anything that you want us to cover, also leave that in the comments below. Our social media handles and our website is in the description. Uh, thank you guys for watching and I will see you guys in the next one.